I sort of uh, paying homage to him by showing uh, the Rothko Chapel and a few of his paintings. He was born in uh, Lithuania, I think in 1903 and died in 1970 when he committed suicide. Uh, you see, he died on February 25th, 1970, so 52, 53 years ago. Mark Rothko, born Markus Yakovlevich Rothkovitz, um, was born in uh, 1903, but died February 25th, 1970. Was a Latvian, Latvian, sorry, not Lithuania, was a Latvian American abstract painter. He is best known for his color field paintings that depicted irregular and painterly rectangular regions of color, which he produced from 1949 to 1970. He was one of the great uh, uh, North American painters, together with Jackson Pollock, an abstract expressionist, very different from uh, you know, the action painting of Jackson Pollock. We are going to see some of his works. Although Rothko did not personally, personally subscribe to any one school, he's associated with the American abstract expressionist movement of modern art. Originally emigrating to Portland, Oregon from Russia with his family, Rothko later moved to New York City where his youthful period of artistic production dealt primarily with urban scenery. In response to World War II, Rothko's art entered the transitional phase during the 1940s, where he experimented with mythological themes and surrealist to express tragedy. Towards the end of the decade, Rothko painted canvases with regions of pure color, which he further abstracted into rectangular color forms, the idiom he would use for the rest of his life. Um, don't know what's going on. Uh, he, ah, yes, there is another line which is hidden by this uh, tab. In his later career, uh, Rothko executed several canvases for three different mural projects. The Sigra murals were for the uh, uh, restaurant Four Seasons in the building by Miss van der Rohe. The Sigra murals were to have decorated the Four Seasons restaurant in the Sigra building, but Rothko eventually grew disgusted with the idea that his paintings would be decorative objects for wealthy diners and refunded the lucrative commission, donating the paintings to museums, including the Tate Modern in London. The Harvard mural series was gifted to a dining room in Harvard's Holyoke Center. Uh, their colors faded badly over time due to Rothko's use of the pigment Little Red together with the regular sunlight exposure. The Harvard series has since been restored using a special lighting technique. Rothko contributed 14 canvases to a permanent installation at the Rothko Chapel, which we are going to see, a non-denominational chapel in Houston, Texas. Um, again, uh, one of the truly important uh, painters of, uh, of, uh, of the United States. Here he was, uh, and um, as I said, he, he died at, uh, I think, uh, 66, he committed suicide when he had immense success, which shows that immense success doesn't make one happier. After all, Marilyn Monroe died like this, Michael Jackson died like this, and Elvis Presley died like this. And they were immensely successful, if by, if by success we mean the adulation of a large number of people, the adulation of uh, money, the adulation of everything. And yet they all died tragically, and so did Mark Rothko. He was a great painter. I mean, these canvases so have so much depth that they, they are not, they are not, they are not decorative at all. You know that there is depth in these paintings. Uh, you know, you might see just, uh, you know, you would say there are just three colors. No, there is much more to it.
the mystical paintings, actually, and the Rodko Chapel, which I wanted to show, by the way, of architecture and by the way that he died on the 25th of uh, February. Here uh, there are a few words about it. The Rodko Chapel is a non-denominational -den chapel in Houston, Texas, founded by John and Dominique de Menil. The interior serves not only as a chapel, but also as a major work of modern art. On its walls are 14 paintings by Mark Rothko in various hues of black. The shape of the building, an octagon inscribed in a Greek cross, and the design of the chapel were largely influenced by the artist, meaning Mark Rothko. The chapel sits two miles southwest of downtown uh, in the Monroe's neighborhood, situated between the building housing the, housing the Menil collection and the chapel of St. Basil in the campus of the University of St. Thomas. About 110,000 people visit the chapel each year. Uh, this person, Susan Barnes states, the Rothko Chapel became the world's first broadly ecumenical center, a holy place open to all religions and belonging to none. It became a center for international, cultural, religious, and philosophical exchanges for colloquia and per per performances. And it became a place of pri private prayer for individuals of all faiths. On September 16, 2000, the Rothko Chapel was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the building from the outside. And as we read, Mark Rothko had an important role in uh, you know, designing, conceptualizing the building, although he was held by three architects, one of them being Philip Johnson, the first architect he worked with, worked with and then, you know, something happened and uh, Philip Johnson left and then Mark Rothko worked with two other architects. Uh, this is the so-called the, the conceptual uh, uh, plan of the chapel, the octagon with the, you know, the positioning of the panels. Uh, within, the, <clears throat> within the chapel. But uh, what is strange is that some people I read and I was rather amused, uh, you know, they entered the chapel and they asked the question, where are the paintings? Because, because they don't expect to just see, you know, uh, 14 uh, large uh, paintings, uh, um, uh, roughly just black paintings, uh, and they don't look like their expectation of paintings. So they enter the chapel and they ask, where are the paintings? Now, here we see also the landscape. Here is the broken obelisk um, uh, sculpture, which he didn't do, uh, was uh, donated by uh, uh, Neumann, I think, the name of the artist, the sculptor. And this is the, you know, the, the axonometric view of the octagon. Uh, that uh, houses uh, this chapel. And I took these images from March Daily, which had an extensive uh, presentation of, uh, of this chapel, you know, uh, housing uh, 14 paintings by a major painter, but also a building <clears throat> where, uh, where the, the artist had something to say like an architect, because he, he conceived this uh, house for his own paintings. And some images from the interior. Mark Rothko. So it is a non-denominational chapel, meaning it's a chapel which does not address a specific religion, although I understood at the beginning it was meant to serve a Roman Catholic uh, religion, the Roman Catholic religion, but in time it became a non-denominational. It's very simple, but the, the symbolism of, Tagon, of the octagon is not so simple. Here is the painter in his uh, studio. I understood he smoked incessantly. A very intense man. 
and you have to be intense in order to 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 arrive at the achievement he arrived. Again, the, the sculpture, sculpture is not by him. But the sculpture, I think, is well chosen and it, it, it is evocative in a way of the meaning of the paintings inside the chapel. From what I read, it's a mystical experience to be inside the space of the chapel and to contemplate these paintings, which are not just, you know, that he covered the canvases with black and that was it. No, it, it first it's not, uh, it's not just blackness and it's not, uh, it's, 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 it's mystery there, it's depth in these paintings which appear at the first size to be black. But you see there are small differences that are actually born from the inner tension of the artist. I wouldn't say it's a chapel that, um, you know, uh, consoles you, that, uh, you know, soothes you. No, it's, it's a chapel that, uh, that uh, makes you think and uh, perhaps uh, makes you uh, arrive at a certain uh, pessimism, perhaps. But maybe I'm wrong about this, because good art probably transcends transcends um, in the end pessimism, maybe even the disasters of war of Goya and uh, uh, you know, the Pituras Negras of Goya, who also painted with black, but uh, here the blackness is rather, you know, uh, overwhelming. I wonder what the Texans with their, you know, a cowboy, cowboy has filled in this uh, abstract environment. The Rothko Chapel, Texas, Mark Rothko. There was another painter, and probably there are many other painters, but there was another famous French painter, Pierre Soulage, the, the king of black, uh, who died, uh, you know, some months ago at the age of, uh, I think, 102 or 101. Uh, but uh, a different painter, although he's known as either the prince or the king of black, um, very different from Mark Rothko. So, you know, usually you, you, start, you start with the building and then you fill the building, if it is a museum or a gallery or, you know, something destined for art, with art. But here, actually, the work began with the paintings. You know, the painter contemplated the building to be built around the paintings and for the paintings. There were some studies of light. I have, I, I end this very short presentation of Mark Rothko with uh, two or three images. Uh, I don't know how they were done. I imagine, um, you know, with, uh, using some digital techniques, studies of light within the chapel.
That's it.